If people these days are kind of watching abundant lifestyles and putting a lot of value on things like that, is there actually real potential for danger psychologically by constantly having that benchmark within your head of, of what you're supposed mm. to attain? Without a doubt. Um, so I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with social media. I mean, I think there's a lot of great things about it and I use it professionally. I don't actually, I'm not that active personally on it, but in my professional life, I'm quite active on social media. And I think and there's a lot of benefits, there's a lot of good things that come from it. But you are, I agree 100%, there, there definitely are some risks. And this is what, um, so what psychologists technically call uh, social comparison. It's just pretty self-explanatory, but you know, comparing sure. yourself to other people or other people's lives that maybe and often in that sort of circumstances are, are unattainable. Um, and so, and what we forget is that for you know, 99.9 percent of the history of humanity, that never happened. Mm. You know, so the rich and poor, the haves and the haves nots, the royalty and the peasants, whatever you want to call, it, barely interacted. They didn't, you know, and so they never saw that. And so it wasn't really an issue. So the fact that it is an issue now and the fact that so many of us struggle, it's not surprising that we struggle with it because it's such a new issue in, in terms of human. I mean, even if you think we're all so used to social media now, but I mean, what, Facebook's only, was it 15 years old? or Less, I think. Less than that. Yeah, and yeah. Instagram's 10. That, that's nothing in, in, in the scheme of Oh, you history. know, we're, we're all part of this. Grand experiment exactly. to which we did not consent, I guess. <laughs> well, well, that, well, that's the thing. Well, we are consenting. Um, it's just that we're not. Not everyone's doing it consciously. Yeah, the, or I think mindfully. More, they're not. Yeah, more broadly, we're not consenting. Yeah. We, we but, no, but you're right. Yeah. It, it's a massive experiment. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I said, I think uh, you know, there's good and bad. But but sorry to come back to your question. Uh, we d there definitely are some risks. And for example, um, you know, if I'm constantly looking at I'll just say Instagram, but it could be you know, any other, whatever medium you want. But if I'm constantly looking at people that are um, richer than me, as we talked about earlier, I'm going to feel poor all the time. If I look at people that are better looking at me, which isn't hard to do, mm. um, <laughs> I'm going to feel ugly all the time. Uh, and well, which goes to you know, like body image, for example, yeah. for historically for women, but increasingly for men, uh, is a massive problem. So if I'm looking at you know, health and lifestyle influencers who have got six packs and biceps and everything, even if I exercise regularly and keep healthy, which I do, I'm never go, you know, I'm never going to be at that level for a variety of reasons. So, um, so there is a risk, um, as I talked about earlier, with the unrealistic expectations, that if I look, if I follow the wrong sorts of pages, that I'm going to constantly feel miserable all the time, um, which isn't, which, which, which isn't good, and it, and it can actually be dangerous if, you know, if I have a predisposition to depression, uh, or in other contexts to anxiety. You know, so for example, if I um, you know, if you're following certain pages that are constantly focusing on neg and, and Twitter tends to be worse for this, you know, negative news, catastrophe, or whatever, that can cause significant things. I mean, it doesn't even in me, um, and I don't have a significant anxiety disorder. But you know, yeah. so particularly in recent days and weeks, you know, Facebook's uh, cost copped some criticism, um, justifiably so. I think mm. that, that it's it's like you know they design it. It's like gambling. It's like mm. drug addiction. It's designed, and you know, in some ways, I. I admire, I mean, it's incredibly impressive what they can yeah. do, but we do need to be very careful. And, and I, suppose that's the, I suppose that's what I say, and I, I talk to parents a lot about this who are concerned about adolescent children, that we could rule it out of our lives. I mean, there are people that are totally off that, and that's fine, good luck to them, but most of us don't necessarily want to do that. Mm. So unless you choose to completely opt out, which you can do, um, what we can do, and to come back to your bit earlier about this is an experiment we haven't, well, we can choose how we use it. So we can choose who we follow um, or who we like. We can choose how much time we spend on it. Uh, you know, we can take breaks if we need to. So this is what, you know, for people like myself who don't want to completely opt out, uh, what we can do is be a bit more mindful, or a bit more conscious in how we use it to minimise, um, if not totally eliminate, but to minimise those risks. To check out the full interview, there'll be a link somewhere. I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're an adult, presumably.